Hello! I'm Claudia Skill from Colorway Arts and today I'm here to share with you some important details uh, about the chipboard that can be used to make boxes and cases using cartonage technique and also as I always receive lots of questions on how to cut the chipboard then I will be also sharing with you the cutters I have at home uh, what I like and what I dislike on them and I think you will be able to have one idea and if you are also cutting chipboard for bookbinding or scrapbooking projects I hope that can help you somehow so if you want to know which chipboard to use in your projects and how to cut it stay here with me Okay, then let's start talking about the chipboard. Well, which chipboard to use in your projects will depend on what you are planning to make. So for big boxes or for pieces that will carry or hold something heavy on it, like my toolbox over here, for example, I always hold stuff. So I will definitely go with a thicker chipboard. But if I would like to make a small box, you know, or a small cover, like a notepad cover or an album or any of my simple projects that I'm showing in my free online course, then a thinner chipboard can be okay. So keep in mind that the thicker the chipboard, harder it will be to cut it. But depending on the projects, better will be the finishing, okay? So I made a little research in the internet and I found some different choices in terms of thickness of chipboard and let me share here with you. So we can find chipboard with some different definitions like in points or in inches or even a supply. So I think the easiest ones to compare and to understand are points and inches. So uh, you will find, for example, a very thin chipboard like 20 points where it's the same as 0 0.2, 0 0.02 inch or 0.5 millimeters. Okay, this is the kind of the thickness of the cereal box. And I like to reuse the cereal box a lot in my projects. Maybe you know. And then I would like to use it for some finishing or maybe gluing them together to do some covers. Okay, but you also find another ones like 50 point. It's also something that is not very thick and I would use for some small pieces okay but the ones i would considering for boxes for uh, small boxes big boxes or albums would be for example i have here the 75 point that is 0 0.075 inch or 1.9 millimeters okay and then i have also the 80 point 0 0.08 inch okay you can also found them as heavy chipboard or extra heavy thick chipboard but as i like my boxes to be very sturdy you know i like they are kind of wood you know very hard then i use a hundred point chipboard in all my boxes and projects so it's a hundred point it's 0 0.1 inch it's 2.54 millimeters okay so seeing them together uh it may look the same but believe me the final result will be completely different mainly for boxes okay so if that helps one way that uh, you can check is comparing with dimes so for example uh, the one i use 100 point is the same as two dimes two dimes together okay it's the same fitness and if you have for example 75 point that is more than one but it's less than two okay just so you can try to understand at home if you have one and you really don't know what is that so as i said depending on the size the kind of piece you will be making and also you know your preference in terms of finishing so you will find the best option for you okay in the description of this video i will add the links where you can find those options uh, here online and then next let's see how i cut the chipboard i would say when cutting chipboard or any kind of paper for our projects uh, you have to have in mind two important things first is cutting straight and neat and then i mean having square corners that will you know allow you to make beautiful boxes 
Uh, otherwise, the box will not, you know, sit perfect in your table, on your table, and that it's gonna be kind of weird, you know. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is cutting safe. So I have cut myself very bad here in my finger when I started cardonage. So that's something that I always say to my students, you know, take your time and make sure you are cutting safe. Let me tell you that cutting chipboard is not a fun task. So not at all. And as I said, the thicker the chipboard, the hardest to cut. So if you want to make beautiful boxes, functional boxes, but you know, you don't want to worry about this step, then we have to, some choices. I have some, for example, I have some do-it-yourself kits uh, available for so many different. So this one is for this one, for example, for so many different of kind of projects with our chipboard, our chip, chipboard and other paper pieces already cut in the sizes required for those projects. Okay, so my kits are precisely cut for me for a company that uses one appropriate tool for that. So the boxes will be always, always perfect without worrying about cutting paper. Okay, so that's one option. But if you want to cut your own paper, if you are, you know, making small projects or different projects, then let's see the options I have here for you today. And let me tell you that probably there are other choices out there for you to consider. So I'm not saying the ones I have are the best ones, but you can have one idea. And if you have one of those, or if you use a different one and could like share your experience, please comment below. It will be great for all of us to discuss about this important subject. Even if you use another cutter, it will be, you know, one time that you need to cut small pieces by hand. So having a cut board, uh, um, craft knife or a rotary cutter will be nice. You know, it's, it's important, but the most important thing here is to have a safety ruler. Okay. A metal safety ruler. This is not expensive and you can find, look at Amazon, uh, you can find the right one for you and it protects your fingers so much. I really recommend it. And let me tell you here that before cutting, we need to mark our paper, you know, and to do that, I also strongly recommend having a kind of uh, ruler like this, don't need to be that big, or a tool like this, you know, with square corners, okay, that will be uh, very nice to align, you know, and make sure we are making the marks and cutting this is uh, straight and neat with square corners, okay? So uh, I will do this very quick. So how I use this tool, I just, you know, I never know if the uh, piece that I'm starting is square or no. So I can check, for example, putting this um, piece over there and feeling with my fingers if they are uh, straight and neat or no. Another way you can use um, one tool like this and put like this so I know here that it, it is a square so I can trust this is a square corner. If not, I can start my corner, my square corner, for example. I can make a line like this. So now I know this corner over here is a square, okay? And then I can start making my measures, okay? So for example, if I need uh, I would align with those lines and if I need, for example, four inches, then I mark here. Okay. And if I need, for example, three inches in the other direction, then I will gonna do, I'm gonna align there as well. Okay. And then I, if I mark three inches here, I know I have another square corner. Okay. So that's the way I'm gonna, you know, um, mark my paper and I will know I will have those uh, square corners. Good. So how I'm gonna cut over those lines, okay? So pretend we I did uh, all my marks I need. So the thing I'm liking to use now is this craft knife over here. It's, uh, I used this one, a normal one for a long time. And then recently I changed for this one that is a titanium blade. And I'm feeling better. I like this. I'm liking this tool. Something I like to say here: have a heavy one that you feel comfortable, you know, to work 
uh, with it and use the safety ruler again it's very 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 so let's say I'm gonna cut over here uh, over this uh, line so put the ruler over the uh, so your fingers will be protected here and use the craft knife and go this is a hundred points so it's you know it's the hardest one to cut you have to go so many times you know it's not the first time you go so many times go cut and take your time don't press this hand just go ahead and pass So a hundred point chipboard is really, really hard to cut by hand. Okay, so I had my uh, my cut over here is always, you know, nice, clean to cut using the craft knife. I have some students that are using uh, rotary cutters and they think they like, okay, so can be another choice. And uh, of course, the 75 will be easier, the 50 will be easier, <laughs> you know. So as I said, the 100 point is the hardest one to cut, okay. So this is how I uh, usually, uh, you know, mark my paper and cut using my um, simple tools like this. Okay, the, this is a simple tool I ha also have at home. It's a kind of guillotine uh, cutter. It's very good to use. I use a lot for copy paper. Sometimes I have a lot of copy paper to cut and poster board, cereal box, okay? I would go with thin chipboard as well, like a 20 point or a 50 point. Uh, this one that is mine is gonna cut. I know there are some other um, styles of, you know, models of uh, cutters like that there are like heavy duty so they said they can't cut the thick chipboard i only i don't have an experience of those if uh, but my concern with this tool over here is that you know when i put my um, chipboard let's say i have here the fifth point let me cut in this uh, part so i also have this uh, guide over here that i can you know uh, use okay to help me you know fix and do but even though if it is a big piece or it's too thick when i'm cut then the paper will you know move a little bit like that even though i put there when i um, this is a small piece probably not so i just cut straighten it itself uh, sharpening so don't need to change this blade that's something nice it cuts always you know very clean very neat I really like the way it cuts so when I can use I use it I have to test some heavy duty that don't you know try to don't move the paper I think this is the most difficult thing if we are cutting thick chipboard and okay it can be something um, that can be a problem if the paper moves and then if moves I will not have you know square corners well, as I said, I use a 100-point chipboard and I buy them in big sheets, like 28 by 44 inches. So even though I don't cut the chipboard for my kids myself, I do cut when I'm designing a new project or when I'm making something that I don't have kids yet or simple pieces that are easy to cut by hand, like for books, cases or albums. But as I start with these huge pieces of chipboard, I bought this ginormous cutter. It's a Logan cutter. It used for matte board. So it was not designed for thick chipboard, but let me tell you here how I use it. So well, the first thing I don't like here, it's, it's you know, the size. It's really too big. <laughs> And it was always hard to find a good place for it in my house. So when we made my studio, my husband and me looked at it a lot, looked a lot, and then we figured out the solution. We put two IKEA kitchen cards together, 
and this way I can storage paper under and I have this nice space to work and now so as I cut a lot of craft paper for my kids and for my classes then we fix the support on the side then it's easy for me to work and to cut the craft paper as well okay then let me tell you here how I use it um, here I have we have this ruler over here it's nice to try to have like this uh, straight and neat cuts uh, let me tell you that before having this one i bought a simple uh, smaller one that didn't have this nice ruler over here so it was even harder to cut straight and neat uh, i always had you know to mark the paper in that one to make sure you know i was cutting it right uh, here with this nice ruler it's a little better but I have to say it's not always straight I'll show you here uh, what I think is the problem for this cutter and yeah sometimes I lost you know pieces of chipboard that are not straight and neat square corners so it not fit my boxes but well here is the blade so it's over here inside and uh, it goes right here inside this guide so it's uh, pretty much uh, safe uh, they also have this guide over here that can help you know to put you know to with a ruler you know if you align there and here then you have more chance you know to cut uh, straighten it but goes just till um, about six inches over here so if i need to cut something um if my paper is bigger than this here over here in my working space then most of the time i don't use this guide over here there okay then let me tell you here i have the uh this is a hundred point uh chipboard so here i i can also slide this guy and put in the position i want so let's say i need something about four inches or about 10 um 10 centimeters then I put here and then I'm gonna go and cut as sometimes when I do that then I have the 10 centimeters over here or 4 inches but it's not right there so if it is a piece that I'm cutting lots of the same piece I usually have one sample and template that is exactly the size I need then then I slide and then I can check if I have the same the same thing so it helps me to have more straight or if I can, I use that um, that guide over there that can help a little bit as well. So here is the blade. Let me tell you how I cut a point. I go slowly, okay? And you have to pass sometimes two or, two try, two or three times to make sure I'm gonna cut. But here I can tell uh, it's not very nice and clean. Um, edge on the bottom normally because you know it's too thick this chipboard and let me tell you, I just changed this blade and the blade goes so fast sometimes if I cut a lot I have to change this blade two sometimes three times in a day so that's not fun you know yeah, so this is the 100 point let me show you here I have the 75 point of course gonna be easier to cut I'm gonna put there okay you just pass one but again this is not very nice clean cut then I will probably need to sand over here to bet to have a better cut but it helps me a lot because I start with really big sheets so here is the point if you are starting with 12 by 12 with better size i would not recommend this huge uh, tool over here for that i think we can have better choices to cut small pieces of chipboard well then i, I was looking for other kind of cutters that could allow me you know to cut small pieces um, and then i decided to go with uh, first i bought the car heavy duty and um, it was a recommendation of my student of mine and then recently i have heard so good things about the rotatring that i have decided to give it a try 
but first thing I have to say, none of them allow me to cut small pieces directly. You know, rotatoring house, uh, you know, allows me to cut a small piece than the cow actually. But for both of them, uh, I will need, you know, to go from a bigger one. If I if I want a small one, I will need to go from a bigger one and then, you know, kind of subtract from that the small size I need. But that actually is not a big deal. But well, I love how nice and clean both of them cut. And so let me use the uh, here for you, both of them and try to make my comparison. And then again, if you are using them, let me know in the comments below your opinion, okay? Uh, then let me start using the core here over here. Then this is a 15 inch um, long. I think they have other sizes as well. Uh, let me go with uh, the 75 points first. Then what I really love in this tool is, okay, I need to open over here and then I'm gonna put my paper. I can also move this guide here to, you know, align my piece, okay? And uh, this guy gonna start right there on the top. And when I do this here, when I, uh, uh, when I push here, then what's happened, it, it will hold this paper in place. So it doesn't move, really, it doesn't move. It's great. So here I have the 75 point uh, chipboard and I'm gonna pass there, but it's not on the first cut. I have to go over um, sometimes, maybe, you know, it depends on, again, the thickness of the chipboard uh, and you have to press a little bit there. So maybe I, uh, it depends of the way your blade is, you know, sharpened. And, but it gives me a great, great, great cut, you know, very clean. Uh, and something in this tool, I need to change blade uh, kind of frequently, not so much frequently, but I need, I change mine first time after using maybe two or three months using, but I don't use it that much, okay? Another thing you have to change sometimes is this cutting mat over here, and then you can use more than once. You can move, you know, move the position, and then you can cut, use it uh, so many times. But you have to change this uh, periodically. So this was the 75 point, let me see here. Oh. Let me see here uh, if I'm using the, if I'm using the, uh, you know, a hundred point. Okay, so it's gonna take some time to cut, but we'll have uh, square corners, you know, the paper will not move. And of course, the thicker the chipboard, you know, more difficult will be to cut, but it's really nice cut, okay? You can always go with uh, a bunch of copy papers, and I do like this, and then you go, it, it cuts when, uh, in both directions, okay? So you can you go ahead and Removing so it not cuts. I would say this uh, tool doesn't cut at once. You go so many times. You don't need to press very hard. Okay, you just take your time and you have great, uh, great, uh, a great cut. Okay, I like so far. Okay, but it depends where you're gonna use it for. Okay, so let's see the rotatory now. Mine is uh, 12 inches, okay? And let's do the same I did with the car on so we can, you know, see what is different. Uh, so here I have the 75 points. Let me start with the copy paper. Then I have a bunch of copy papers I can put there. I also have this uh, guide that I can move, you know, and mark the the position, okay. Uh, this cutter doesn't have that that good thing that I love in car that 
that press the paper and doesn't allow to move. Okay, so it you, you have I recommend hold to make sure it to not move, and it cuts just in that direction. So you just you know pass once, and it cuts perfectly. Very nice cutter. I really like it as well. So I want to cut the 75 point. I have to move this guy over here again. And then let me put the 75. And okay, hold in place and go. Okay, you cut once. Did you see? You just go and cut and you have also a great cut over here. So 75 point is, um, you can cut I didn't press very well, it was a very nice cut. And I have over here a hundred point uh, to check. Okay, it's kind of hard to put, you have to. But the, the tool says it cuts to three millimeters thick, and this is 254. Okay, and then you have to, you have to go, you know, and cut it. It moves, it moves a little bit. Okay, and then you go <laughs> and you have to press. So if I lose this tool for a hundred <laughs> thick chipboard, I would ask my husband maybe to cut. I'm not strong enough to use the rotor string for a hundred point chipboard. Okay, but I would do that, you know, in another cutter like I show you, you know. So if I would compare to rotor string to the car one, I would say, what I love in the car is it press and it keeps the paper in, in place and I can go so many times, you know, slow and I can have a good cut, but I have to change blade, you know, and it takes more time. For the rotatring, I would say you don't need to change blade, it's self-sharpening, that's a great thing, but the paper moves so you have to hold in place. It's great, I would go to uh, 75 point with no problem, it's great to use, but I will not cut a hundred point chipboard over here, at not at least not myself, maybe if someone else is using for a hundred point chipboard and has, you know, better, uh, a better result, please let me know, I'd love to know that, okay? I'd say another thing that you have to compare is price, of course, you know, because like car is much cheaper than rotatring. So it completely depends on what you are using and um, compare, compare and make your choice. Okay, so in conclusion, the thickness of the paper and the way you will cut them depends on what you want to make and what you want to put inside of it. Okay, so go with the thinner ones for small boxes, albums, covers, and with the thicker ones to have more sturdy boxes. The most important thing you have to know that cutting chipboard is not super easy, then take your time and cut safely. Okay, and again, if you don't want to waste your time cutting paper, then using some do-it-yourself kits can be a good option. Okay, the link to find them is in the description of this video. The kits include all pieces of chipboard and other papers, uh, cut in the right size in different shapes to make fabric boxes and cases, and also include online color picture instructions step by step, no steps missing. Thanks so much for watching. I hope uh, this video, you know, help at least a little bit. And if you have any question, opinion, please comment below. And if you like this video and have friends that, you know, may like it as well, please give me a thumbs up, you know, and share this video. Thank you so much. See you soon.